Welcome, boys and girls. We have been learning about forgiveness. Let's review the five phases of forgiving again, shall we? Every time you say up, I want you to point up. Ready? Mess up. Fess up. Clean up. Rise up. Step up. Wow, I think you're really getting it. Great job, guys. I can do it, too. And I'm faster than they are. Mess up, fess up, clean up, rise up, step up. Wow. Yeah, that was really fast, Red. Today we're learning about rising up. When we practice forgiveness, it's like walking over a mountain. You will rise up, 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 up on your way as you go through each phase. If I want to go up, I go up an elevator. Sorry, Red. The mountain of forgiveness doesn't have an elevator. You have to do the work. Shucks. Last week, I shared that after Jesus died, I gave up. I went back to fishing. One morning, I was out fishing. Jesus told me to cast my nets in after a whole night of coming up with nothing. It felt very familiar because the exact same thing happened to me when I first met Jesus. And sure enough, we caught over a hundred fish. When we came to shore, I smelled something familiar. Ah, oh, it was a smoky campfire smell. I love smelling bacon sizzling in the morning. When I smell that, I know my mama's cooking. Yeah, like bacon in the morning. Well, Jesus invited us to join him. Bring some of that fish you just caught, he said. But why would Jesus tell them to bring fish? Wasn't he already cooking food? Yeah, he did. Jesus already had all the fish and the bread that he needed ready to go. But still, Jesus told me, bring some of the fish that you just caught. Jesus wants to use what we can bring. He doesn't need it, but he would still, but he will still include our work. That was the moment I realized that what I really do really matters to Jesus. So did you bring the fish? You bet. You bet I did. I climbed back into the boat and I dragged the net ashore. I was going to show Jesus my work. My net was full of large fish. 153 of them. Even with so many, the net was not torn. It stayed together. That right there was a miracle. Did you cook all of them up? Well, we didn't need to cook all of them. I ended up giving most of them away. But that breakfast meant something. You see, Jesus was trying to tell me something. That breakfast is the most important meal of the day? My mom is always saying that. Well, it was more than that, Red. In my culture, to eat with somebody who you have had a problem with is a way to express forgiveness. Jesus was saying, I forgive you through breakfast. Wow. Hey, Carly shared her goldfish with me yesterday. Well, that's a pretty good sign, Red. I think she's forgiven you. That must feel pretty good. It feels great to be forgiven. Like I could fly around the whole world. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, slow down there, Red. Without forgiving others, we would miss some pretty awesome views at the top of the mountain of forgiveness. Even though it can feel like we are sinking down with sin, confession and absolution, it's worth it when we can rise up again with a fresh look on the world after just being forgiven. Romans 8.5 says this, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you will live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. I'm so glad I'm part of the wonderful group. Me too. Boys and girls, let's thank God for forgiveness in our life. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for restoring relationships that get messed up. We are sorry for the times we sin, and we confess that we don't even always get forgiveness perfectly right. Thank you for showing us what it means to be forgiving people. Keep us in your loving arms always and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you next week. Bye, boys and girls.